So this is the visitor process in BNI Connect. And by the way, this is part of a 56-page manual on visitors, uh, the flow of visitors. I do have a guide available that goes through every single step of the process. You can download a copy of that right in the handouts section of the GoToWebinar software if you'd like to. Otherwise, uh, Jenny has a copy of this or contact us, support at BNIConnect.com. We'll be happy to send you a copy of it. But this is how visitors flow in BNI Connect. So the first part of the process, which happens before the meeting, is that you can use BNI Connect to send a branded and well-written visitor invitation to a potential visitor. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. The second part of the process, and this is the part, uh, kind of like the missing link that we never had before, but it's the pre-registration of visitors. It's really the RSVP for visitors to really make sure that they know that they're supposed to come to this meeting. This is the part right here that has really turned around the whole visitor process. And then there's the third part of this, which it happens after the meeting, which is the visitor follow-up portion. So let me jump in and we'll show you each part of this in BNI Connect. I'm not going to do this all via uh, PowerPoint. We're going to actually use BNI Connect and show you this stuff. So let me jump over. And hopefully everybody's familiar with this. This is the home screen in BNI Connect where you can see all of your stats and also submit some you know, referrals and thank you for closed business and one-to-ones and all that wonderful stuff. To get to some of these other functions, we are going to have to go to the scary place beyond the home screen. So we're going to have to click a couple of buttons and get beyond the home screen here. So to do that, we're going to go to these menu options up along the top. We have Network Operations, Reports, Tools, and Admin. Most of the time, um, most people are only going to see Network Operations and Reports. Um, unless you're on the leadership team or a webmaster, you're not going to really see those tools and admin. That's okay, though, because most of what we need to do are under Network Operations and Reports. So the way I remember where to go and find stuff, network is, the, is really the social media, the networking components in BNI. It's where I can go and work with the groups, uh, have discussions with other members around the world, where we can go to work with our connections, our personal address book in BNI, or testimonials, the picture gallery. Operations and reports are really the other two places where you'll spend the majority of your time. Think of it this way, operations is input. It's the day-to-day -day management operations for your chapter. So if you need to do something, you need to input something, you need to create something, go to operations. Reports are read only. So you can never enter anything into the reports. You're looking to get statistics, you're looking to get a roster sheet, something like that, you go to the reports. Input, operations, reports, read only. So let's take a look. If we want to create a visitor invitation, we're going to go to operations. So if I go to operations, so once we get there, we have a bunch of different options down along the left-hand side, managing the meeting and memberships and goals and all that. I'm not going to get into all of that today, but I do have other webinars where we go into that stuff. So, um, oh, I do have a note here from uh, Jenny saying that the audio is pretty bad. Is it is it bad for everybody or is it just bad on... Um, a couple of people. And if I need to, I can try to um, redo my connection. All right, Brian's saying that the audio is pretty good for him. Anybody else have any? Yeah, uh, Susan says it's okay in Anaheim. I think, Jenny, you might have a bad connection, possibly. Yep, Kurt says it's fine. Denise says it's okay. So, I'm sorry, Jenny. Good thing you heard the one earlier this morning. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and continue then. Um, and if you want to, Jenny, my suggestion would be to maybe to, uh, to drop out of the call and then try to reconnect, or if you happen to be connected on mobile, um, maybe working on a, a Wi-Fi connection or something. All right, so... The place that we want to go to send a visitor invitation is under create email. So create email is where the visitor invitation is located. 
And once we go to create email, we have three options. We have email my chapter, email visitor invitation, and email chapter visitors. By the way, um, it has nothing to do with visitors, but email my chapter is a pretty useful function. This it allows you to get the email distribution list for your chapter, and it's it's the most current distribution list, has all the new members, and it's removed all the old members. So it's a great way to be able to do that. And that'll come in handy later. But the email visitor invitation is what we're going to do. And as I mentioned, this is a way to send a custom email invitation to a visitor that's brand compliant and well written. One thing to keep in mind, we are a word of mouth relationship organization. We are not a spam organization. So really, what the way to look at this is as a second touch. This was not designed to be a let's blast out emails to 100 people, you know, go out, you know, try to cast a net and go fishing. What this is, is really it's a little bit more formal of a invitation to somebody that you've already spoken with. For, for example, um, like the way I use this is, let's say I'm out at a chamber of commerce event, you know, whether it's a, a business after hours or first Friday coffee or something like that. And I meet somebody that I think would be a good fit for my chapter. There's somebody in my chapter I'd like that person to meet. I'll verbally say to the person, hey, by the way, I'd love to introduce you to my chapter. What are you doing on Thursday? Oh, that sounds great. I'd love to come to that meeting. Awesome. Do you mind if I send you some info? That is what this is. So let's say that I met, um, let's say that I met Jenny from BNI, and I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my own email address so that the email comes to me and you guys can see what it looks like. Okay? So the, uh, oh, I spelled her name wrong. Sorry about that, Jenny. So the personal message, what this is going to be is your first, uh, the first paragraph of the email that gets sent out. So you want this to be recognizably from you. So it you know, comes across in your voice. So I could say, you know, Jenny, uh, it was great meeting you at the chamber networking event. I would love to introduce you to my referral team. Okay. When I click send, it's going to take that. It's going to wrap it up in a nice little package. It's going to put a bow on top, and it's going to immediately send it out to, well, me in this case. And this is what the invitation looks like. You can see it has a nice branded image. It has the Dear Jenny, and it has the very first paragraph here. It was great meeting you at the Chamber Networking event. I'd love to introduce you to my referral team. It then has my chapter information, which it puts in automatically. So you don't have to remember the zip code of your where your chapter meets or the address. You can put it in there. It does it automatically. Now, the next part of this is critical as well. It briefly and succinctly introduces BNI to the person. A lot of things, especially that new members struggle with, is what do I say to a visitor to invite them to my chapter? And a lot of times we do one of two things. We either don't say enough or we end up, you know, babbling on and on and on and on and on about BNI and we kind of scare them away. So this has just the right of information, amount of information in there. Then lets them know the call to action. We're looking for somebody. And then finally it says, would you like to attend? Please RSVP with me. If they hit reply to this message, it will go to your email address. So you will get all of the replies to this email. So uh, just a couple of things that were brought up in the earlier webinar today. Um, this is a regionally customized email. So the same one is used for all of the chapters within the area. So if you do have suggestions for verbiage or for wording or, you know, you'd like to add in that, you know, please be prepared to pay a breakfast fee or something like that, um, please talk to Jenny or Adam in the office and they'll be able to help with that part of the process. But it would apply to all of the chapters within the region. And the second part of this is if you do like most of this, but, you know, for example, let's say that you'd like to use this for a visitor's day or something like that, and the wording really isn't appropriate for a visitor's day. Um, it's more, you know, for a single chapter visit. Or maybe it's that, you know, you're inviting somebody that there isn't an opening in their category, so you want to take that paragraph out. What I'd recommend doing is doing what I just did. Send a copy to yourself, okay? Then you can go in and either forward it to them, 
and take out all the extra information here. And you can go ahead and edit this. And maybe you want to say that you, we want to take out the BNI Burr chapter is currently looking for someone in your profession. You know, I'd personally like to introduce you to a meeting. So you, know, you can change some of the words or if you need to put in on Wednesday, you know, March 1st, you know, just make sure you change it from blue back to black or something like that. So, you know, there's things that you can do with this to make it even more usable for a specific purpose. All right, that was a suggestion from the earlier webinar. All right, so that's the visitor invitation. The other thing about the visitor invitation, we're not tracking those. Uh, so we're not keeping a list of email addresses or who's using it or who's sending out invitations. We can't go back and get them later. It's just a means to very quickly send out an email that's nice and branded. All right, any questions on that? All right, so the next part of this process, okay, so now we just did the invite. The next part of this process, and this is the most important part of the whole thing, pre-registering visitors. Now, for the visitor hosts that are on the line with us today, you guys are used to having to go in and type in all of the visitor information. This part of the process will be a life changer for you. And the reason for that is that when you use the pre-registration process, it means that the members are entering the information for the visitors themselves, or the visitor is registering themselves for the meeting, which means that later on after they come to the meeting, all you have to do is click a checkbox that says, yep, this person showed up as opposed to having to type everything in. So let me show you how this works. So let's say that a, um, a visitor says, yeah, you know what, that sounds great. I do want to come to a BNI meeting. What you do is you can then register them for that. Up, Hey, do you mind if I register you? Great, I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is, again, under operations because we're doing data entry. Operations, manage visitors. And you should see a register a prospective visitor. Register a prospective visitor before a meeting. Okay, register a prospective visitor before a meeting. And if I click on this link, this will just open up a form. All right, and really, all you need to do is fill out the form. Um, so we're gonna you know, choose who it is, let's say, Computer sales, we choose the date of the visit. You know, you'll notice I can't choose any past dates. That's how you know you're in the right function because I can only choose future visit dates. So let's say that um, this person is going to visit on the 2nd of March. And let's say Jenny is going to come cross country here and come and visit the BNI Burr chapter. We can fill out all the information. And when you're working with your members to encourage them to do this, emphasize the fact that you know, what we're doing is, what you want to do is assume that this person is going to be a longtime member. So you're actually filling out their record that they're going to have for the next 20 years. So you want to make sure that you put their address in and put their email in and put all of the information in knowing that it's going to carry with them for their entire BNI career. So fill out the address correctly. Make sure you put in the phone number and the email address and the city and all of that. The phone number and the email address. And once again, I am going to use my email address because something very important happens as soon as I click submit. And again, this is going to be the game changer right here. So as soon as I click submit, I, am, I, as the visitor, I immediately get an email that says, thank you for registering to visit this chapter. Please plan on coming to the meeting and please plan on being there for a full 90 minutes and please bring plenty of business cards. Now, what that just did by doing that, and here, by the way, here's the email. It just came in. You're confirmed to visit the BNI Burr chapter. This just changed the mentality of the visit because a lot of times when we go and we, we invite somebody to the chapter meeting, it's a very formal, uh, I'm sorry, informal invitation. It's, hey, you want to come and visit my chapter? Sure, no problem. When is it? Thursday. Great, I'll be there. What time is it? Seven o'clock. Awesome, I'll come after, oh, 
oh, you meant 7 o'clock in the morning? Sure, not a problem. I'll be there. And that all happens, and then all of a sudden, Thursday morning, you know, comes around, and the visitor's not there. And why is that? Because, you know, the, the alarm goes off at, oh, God, 30, and the person's like, oh, my goodness, what did I just get into? I don't want to go to a 7 o'clock in the morning meeting. And, you know, they end up, you know, hitting the snooze button a couple more times. You know, because what they're thinking, having never seen a BNI meeting before, is, you know what, this is just another networking event. This is going to be a room full of 100 people shaking hands and trying to sell me stuff. And, you know, I don't, you know, nobody's even going to notice if I'm not there. And they justify it by then not showing up. So what this does is it says, you know what, you're expected to be there. We are going to notice if you're not there. And the person will also get an email two days before the meeting saying, by the way, you are registered for this meeting. Please show up. Now, the other great thing that happens is that as part of the leadership team, I also received a very similar notification saying, hey, by the way, Jenny Nering is confirmed to visit the chapter meeting. Please be prepared to welcome Jenny. Arrive early. Have a name badge ready for her. Maybe you even want to, because it has the phone number in here, maybe you even want to reach out to that visitor ahead of time and say, hey, by the way, I notice you're in the computer profession. That is awesome. We have a web designer in our chapter, top notch. You know, we've been looking for a great computer person in the chapter for a long time. I can't wait to introduce you to our web designer. Now, Jenny's thinking, oh, you know what? I have to get to this meeting. The more touches we get, the more ways that we can make this person feel like they're part of the group before they ever walk through the door, the better the chance that they are going to become part of your group. And even if they never submit an application, they become a longtime referral source or client for somebody in the room. All right, so now I mentioned that visitors can register themselves as well, but how can a visitor do that if they can't log into BNI Connect? Well, on the website, on your regional website. So if I go to SoCalBNI.com, now you guys can just click the uh, regional website button here in the upper right-hand corner. It'll take you to SoCalBNI uh, because I'm a member in Rhode Island. That would just take me to Rhode Island. So I'm going to go to SoCalBNI.com. And let's say that I'm a visitor and I'm scouting around looking for a chapter. And let's see, North Orange County, I think the Coast Professionals BNI. So if I go here and I go to the chapter website, you'll notice on the chapter website that there is a link here in the upper left-hand corner. It says Visit Chapter. And if I click this link here, this is pretty much the exact same form that you would fill out as a member on the inside of BNI Connect. The only difference is, is that it's on the public internet, which means anybody can fill out this form. Now, to protect from robots and stuff automatically entering a bunch of material, we do have a CAPTCHA code on here. And the other difference is they do have to type in the person that invited them as opposed to it being automatically selected as the person doing the data entry. But for the most part, it's all the exact same information. Once they click Submit, the same thing happens. They get a registration notice saying, congratulations, you're registered. It also has the um, two-day reminder and the leadership team, the visitor host team, and the director consultant all get that other email saying, congratulations, you have a visitor coming. Now, on top of that, once people start registering for the meeting, now you can start to build a registration list for that upcoming meeting. There's a report for that. So what we can do is go into the reports. So if I go to reports now, one of the reports is the visitor registration report. The visitor registration report. You're going to have to scroll down to the bottom of the screen because there's a lot of reports. But the visitor registration report, as long as I, I can you know, change this date range to anything I want to, but by default it's going to show you the next seven days, which is going to include my next meeting. And here we have, we have two visitors that are scheduled to visit next week's meeting. We have Mike and Jenny, both are going to come to the meeting. So now I'm starting to build a list. Now I can do a lot with this list. Again, I can use it as a contact list. I can call them. I can welcome them to the group. I can use this to make name badges. Nothing makes a visitor feel more welcome 
than if you have their name badge already written out for them. I've seen people have whiteboards that just said, we'd like to welcome Mike and Jenny today as our visitors. Worst case scenario, it's better than having them have to write a bunch of chicken scratch on a manual sign-in sheet. You could just print this out and use this as a kind of check-in sheet. There is more information available. Um, however, the screen's just not wide enough to put it all in one place. So if you export this to Excel, you will then be able to see all of the additional details. So there is the, let me I pull this over to the right screen here. Whoops. So when I pull this over to this screen, you'll see that it has more information available. For example, the address details, those are now part of the report that wasn't available. You can also use that to format the report and put check boxes on it if you want to use it as a check-in sheet or anything like that. All right, so that's it from a, from a registration standpoint. Now, we have to go with after the meeting. So let's take this to the next step. So we've gone through the invitation. Now we already went through that they can register themselves or a member registers their visitor, which I, again, highly recommend that you get your chapter involved with doing that. Now the third part of this process is the follow-up. This happens after the meeting. Now, if you are pre-registering your visitors, this part is super easy for the visitor hosts. Let's take a look at how we do that. So visitor hosts, when you, when you have to go after the meeting, we're going to go back to the operations because we're going to work with the data. So we have to do that under the operations menu. Under manage visitors, you should see manage registered visitors and mark attendance. So if we click on this, this will allow us to search our visitor registration list. So I'm going to just search from uh, you know, today onward, and I can see the upcoming registrations, two for this coming week's meeting and one for the weekend after. Now, let's say that somebody needs to reschedule. You can also do that. So if I want to mark them as having attended or they call to reschedule, what I need to do is click the Edit button. So let's say that Mike did show up at the meeting, and also assuming we travel to the future, to next week's meeting. All we need to do is click this button that says visitor attended and put a check mark in the box. If I put a check mark in the box, the next thing that pops up out of nowhere, it says add visitor to palms. Now there are some circumstances where you don't want to add them to the palms. By the way, adding to the palms is what gives the person that invited them credit for bringing that person to the meeting. So when you're looking at the palms, they have a one in the V column. But again, there's times when you may not want to do that. And you know, for example, if it's their second or third or fourth or fifth visit, or maybe it's that they're a BNI member in another chapter, those aren't really eligible visitors. And when you, you know, if you think about it, if anybody's using the, tra the, the chapter traffic lights, one of the things that uh, affect the, tra the traffic lights is the conversion ratio, which is very simply the number of visitors that are in the Palms report divided by the number of new members, and we have a conversion ratio. So if you're putting the same person in as a visitor two, three, four, five, six times, that is going to dramatically lower your conversion ratio. All right, so moving on. Again, if they entered all this information ahead of time, all you need to do is confirm it. You do need to confirm who invited them. And you choose the right person from the list. Choose the date of the visit and make sure all of that is correct. And then the final choice is, do you want to send them a follow-up email? So most of the time we're going to say yes we want that person to get the email it's going to say thank you for visiting hope you enjoyed it all of that sometimes you may not want to send it for example if they've maybe visited three times already there's no sense to give them another another one maybe it's that they're already a bni member maybe you're and again i know this would never happen in your area but maybe you're a couple of weeks behind on entering the visitors and you know they actually visited a month ago it's probably pretty embarrassing to get that email at that point. So we're just going to go ahead and click submit. And in a second, I will get that email. You'll notice that this person has now 
been removed from the registered visitors. Now they're moved over into the regular visitor database, which is also a big port part of this is that we're building up a visitor database. We know who's come to the chapter. We can reach out and connect with them at a you know, at another time. Let's say you're having a visitor's day and you want to re-invite everybody that's been to the chapter so far this year. You're having a networking event or a Christmas party and you want to invite all of your visitors for the past six months. You can do that as long as you're marking your visitors in the system. All right now, let's say that the person did not register before the meeting. You still got to get them into BNI Connect. I always recommend going into the visitor registration first to search for them. And if they're not there, then click on Add Visitor. This is the, the exact same form. So uh, just fill it out, fill out the details, name, address, email, all of that stuff. And again, if you know that they weren't registered, there's also the ability to go in and work with the visitors by recording a visitor post-meeting that wasn't pre-registered. And you can also go in and manage your visitors. So if you need to go in and make details changes or they finally got back to you with their email address or um, you wanna just clean up the visitor database and delete things, you can do that through manage visitors. All right, and that, my friends, is essentially the uh, the visitor process. Oh, there's one more thing I forgot to show you guys. Um, the There is, once you start collecting your visitors, there is a visitor report. So if I go back to the reports menu, one of the reports here is the visitor report. So we have the, the registration and not attended reports, but we also have the chapter visitor report, which will be a report of all the people that attended the meeting. So once again, let's say I want to go back and I want to invite, we're having a, uh, we're going to have a, uh, what do you call it? Like a March Madness party um, at our chapter. So we want to invite everybody that's been to our chapter for the last six months. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to, invite all the people from the last six months to our chapter. I can now go back and I have their phone numbers and their email addresses. I can also export this list as well and have all of their physical addresses as well. All right, so again, now <laughs> we have, uh, th again, this is the three parts of the process, inviting visitors, pre-registering visitors, and then following up with them. All right, so do we have any questions on that? And I know we're at the bottom of the hour, but if you, if you guys have a couple more minutes, about three or four more minutes, I would love to share with you guys um, my personal experience with using this um, and how it has affected my chapter. So are you guys up for that? Yet if anybody does need to leave right away, again, it's towards the bottom of the hour, if you have an important, important appointment to get to, I completely understand. All right, so sounds like it's a good idea. All right, cool. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me just get over to this other slide. All right, so here's the deal. This is all great in theory, but does it actually work? So as I mentioned, I am a member. Um, I've also been on the leadership team, and about two years ago, uh, I was the president of my chapter. Uh, not this term, not the term before. So right before that, I was the president of my chapter, and you know, just like we do all the time, we had, we were planning a visitor's day and we had our visitor's day and it was coming up and you know, traditionally we do what every chapter does I think and the week before the visitor's day, we have kind of our accountability meeting and we say, all right, so I'm gonna go around the room. How many visitors do you have coming next week? Now and our chapter has about you know, 53 people in it at the time. So we're, okay, John, how many visitors? I have two visitors coming. Jane, how many visitors do you have coming? I have three. Bob, how many visitors? Uh, I don't have any, but I, maybe I'll get one. By but anyway, you go around the room, and by the end of it, you know, I'm thinking, okay, two people, three people, two people, two people, one person, one person, three people. We're going to have like 150 people here. Now, the whole time, being the director of support for BNI Connect, I'm thinking, yep, yeah, we need to have people register these visitors. And, you know, when I looked after doing this, I realized that we only had six visitors registered for the meeting. Yeah, you know, this is, I was kind of, kind of starting to freak out a little bit. Like, um, this is going to be a terrible visitors' day if we only have six visitors. 
And they told me just a few minutes ago that we're going to have like 100 people showing up. So there's, there's kind of a disconnect here. Now that said, usually um, you, know, you have these visitors, visitors days, and if they say 100 people are going to show up, how many people actually do show up? Is it 10%, 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, 50%? Now, on average, I think it's somewhere in that 10 to 40 percent. So now I'm thinking, well, we have six whole people registered. This is going to be a terrible day. So I sent out this message to people. I said, listen, we have six days until our visitor's day. We only have six people registered. So I'm going to kind of my cry for help here. Um, so I sent them a link. It said, click here to register. You know, remember how I went to my chapter web page before and I showed you how you can register as a non-member? That's what that link goes to. It goes to that chapter registration page. They said, okay, click here to register your visitors. And they don't even have to log into BNI Connect. So I didn't want any excuses of, I don't have my password, I can't do this, that, the other thing. So I send this email out to the chapter. All of a sudden, my inbox starts going crazy. Ding, 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 new visitor, new visitor, new visitor. So by the next day, we had 21 registered visitors. Now I'm like, sweet, it's not going to be an empty meeting. We're going to have a lot of visitors there. Awesome. I said, well, that worked, so let me try it again. I sent out another email saying, okay, well, we have five days, 21 registered visitors. By the next day, we had 26 registered. Then by the next day, we had 34 registered visitors. So two days until the visitor's day, we have 39 registered visitors. 13 hours. We're counting down now. We have 45 registered visitors. Now, the awesome part about this whole thing is you notice I'm sending the actual visitor report. I just copied and pasted it into the email, and it has that invited by column. So I don't know about you, but I have some competitive people in my chapter. So now you know that the first thing they're doing is they're looking at the list. Oh, who's bringing the most visitors? Who's bringing the most visitors? I got to beat that person. I got to bring a visitor. And they're looking to make sure that their name is actually on the list. So we have 45 registered visitors. How many do you think actually showed up? Forty-two of them. So out of 45 registered visitors, 42 of them showed up. And the other three, and here was the most amazing part, the other three, all because of that reminder email, called up and said, I'm so sorry, something's come up, I can't make it this week. Can I reschedule for another week? To which, of course, we said, no, I'm sorry, this was a one-time deal. I'm kidding, of course. They were welcome to come back the next week. We rescheduled them. They did end up coming back, by the way. And we ended up with six applications turned in at the meeting. We ended up with three more in following weeks, nine applications. We did reject one of them, but we did have eight new members from that visitor's day. It worked. It was successful. I'd call that a good day. So, of course, if it works, you do it again, right? Well, I stepped down from leadership team, and new leaders come in. And they're getting ready to do their first visitor's day, and they're like, yeah, you know, that's great, that's great. No, but, but what we really need to do is we need to get a Facebook page going. We need to get an event set up on Facebook, and we're going to push it out to all our friends. And we're going to, you know what, we're going to have a contest to see who brings the most visitors. And the person that wins the contest is going to um, you know, win a cash prize or get their dues free for a month. Oh, and by the way, our chapter's so big. We're not going to have one visitor's day. We're going to have three visitor's day. We're going to have 15 people from the chapter bring one week and another 15 people the next week and another 15 the next week. So we're going to have three big visitor's days in a row. And they're coming up with all these schemes to do it. And we ended up with a total of eight visitors over three weeks. No buy-in, no accountability. So it's getting close to the end of their term and they come and they're we're going to do another visitor's day. It's like, okay, great. And they started down the exact same path, Facebook things and this and that and the other thing. I'm like, Finally, a, a week before the visitor's day, I said, do you mind if I just jump in and help out with this a little bit? Yeah, you because know, I, wasn't, I wasn't the president. I wasn't any position in the chapter, so I don't really like to interfere, but come on, I really don't want this to fail again. So I said, do you mind if I just get people to register their, their visitors through BNI Connect. That's the only thing I want to do. I just want to get them to send, I'm just going to send them an email for the next couple of days, say, please register your visitors. All I want to do. 
And that time we ended up with you know, about 30 registered visitors, 25 of them showed up, and we had four applications turned in at the meeting. And I'm going to tell you guys a little secret, and even though this is being recorded, hopefully this won't get beyond us and the thousands of people that listen to this, but the reason we didn't have any more applications was because they were so unprepared for it that we didn't have any more applications at the meeting. So shh, don't tell anybody, don't tell a lot of people that. So it works as long as you work the system. So what I'd like to do is to open this up for questions. Um, if you have any questions at all, um, we do have one comment from uh, Jenny. Uh, Jenny says to that only non-BNI members are visitors. So you have to be eligible to turn in an application, basically. That's, that's what defines a visitor. You have to be eligible to turn in an application. If you're already a BNI member somewhere else, you are not a visitor. You're a guest. You're allowed to come. You're allowed to be at the meeting. It's just you don't get credit for it in the POMS report. Does that make sense? Is that, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're alluding to, Jenny? And uh, somebody asked on the last um, session as well, they said, is the data from the old system going to be imported into BNI Connect? And the answer to that one is no. Uh, it's not gone, though. So uh, the office, Jenny and Adam and everybody, they have a copy of the database. They have a copy of all of the records they will keep a copy of all those records indefinitely, so we, they can go back to it, look up any information, but they're not going to be importing it or putting it into BNI Connect. So we're kind of starting, starting with a nice clean slate. Yeah, yeah and you really only want to, uh, Jenny clarified, she said, and you really only want to enter non-BNI members into Connect for follow-up. So, all right. Are there any other questions? So while you guys are thinking of any last minute questions, just a reminder, this is being recorded. We are going to, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. And by the way, if you need to, um, a good referral for me is to please recommend these webinars. This, is, this was a special webinar, but I do a full series of webinars on a monthly basis. You can go up to the website by up to the support site by clicking this question mark in the upper right hand corner and if you click that that will take you to the support site and you'll see all of our upcoming webinars listed so the whole february series was recorded as well as the january just click on the link to the recordings and then the whole march series is about to start up in a week or so by the way this is awesome for new members get them into bni connect right away i go through a whole five series steps for new members, how to complete your profile, how to use the referrals, the online slips, how to connect with other members, use the social media portions, how to work with BNI Connect with the tools and reports, and pretty much uh, almost all of what we covered today with inviting and registering visitors. And I also, on a monthly basis, have one for leadership teams. So a good referral for me is to please register for one of these upcoming webinars or have one of your colleagues do so. And as I mentioned, the recordings you can get here, or you can find them on youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. We have hundreds and hundreds of videos up there. Um, and we even have some short education moment videos, three to five minute videos that you can take back to your chapter and teach a specific thing. All right, so let's see. Uh, we, have, we have some questions coming up, so let's answer these questions. Uh, let's see, Susan says, can we practice with a ghost visitor or two without messing up the stats? So what I would say is, um, if you are going to practice with one, just use yourself and then delete it afterwards. But what I would say is also <laughs> make sure your leadership team knows because they're all going to get that email saying, hey, I'm registering this person. You know, this person's coming to the meeting. So if you do want to test it out, do it as a cohesive unit. And then you can, you can delete by going to the manage function. You can delete both regular visitors and registered visitors. So does that answer your question, Susan? Um, so does this also tie into tracking the visitor conversion ratio? So the visitor conversion ratio, so what happens is when you, when you check off the, you know, add this person to the palms, what happens, I didn't show this part of the process, I can if you'd like me to, Jenny, but what happens is that visitor then gets passed to the vice president. 
So the next time the vice president enters a POMS report, they get presented with a screen saying, all of these visitors have been entered recently. Let me just show you what that looks like. So you have it on the recording as well, and you can refer back to this. So <clears throat> you know, we've gone through the visitor host process, which is entering all of these visitors and marking attendance and all of that. So what happens next is that the vice president goes into meeting management and goes into enter a POMS report. So before they even choose the date for the POMS report, what they get is a screen that says the following visitors have been submitted basically for credit, okay? So John Smith was invited by Harvey Keitel. Jeremy Walsh did the data entry. We were told they were visited on the 24th. Would you like to add that to the POMS report? So this is kind of that check and balance between, oh, well, the, maybe the vice president has been used to all this time just manually putting in the ones into the column for when somebody invites a visitor. This will do that. This will automatically enter that one into the POMS report, but the vice president has to say, yes, yes, I see that this is happening first. And the same thing with Mike, you can choose yes or no. Um, if you choose no, it does not delete the visitor. The visitor stays in the system. All the information is there. Um, it just does not give the credit into the POMS report. All right, does that answer your question there, Jenny? Now, that's what, that, that's what controls the conversion ratio, by the way. It's, again, it's just number of visitors in the POMS report. Every time they click yes or every time they manually put a one, so over uh, with the traffic lights, that's a six-month period. So it says, okay, over the last six months, let me look at the POMS V column. How many visitors were there? There were 10 visitors. Okay, how many new applications were there? There were 20 applications. That is a 50% conversion ratio. But they don't differentiate. Well, this person put the same visitor in three times. It's really only seven visitors. You know, they don't, the system does not do that. It just takes the number and divides it. All right, awesome. Uh, awesome comment, Jenny, she says, I love how it all ties in together. When everyone does their piece, it works. And that is so very true, as long as everybody's doing their piece. So the member does their piece by entering the registered visitor. Then the visitor host does their piece by register, by marking them as, as attended. Then the vice president does the final check, says, yes, we're giving credit to it. So. Absolutely, it's meant to, to go across these positions and everybody works together. All right, let's see, Mark has a couple of questions. Uh, who should be sending the email to a new guest that attended the meeting today? Only the visitor host or can the member who invited the emails or invite the visitor also send the email? So the, uh, the email goes out automatically when the visitor host, again, when the visitor host goes in and marks them as having attended, it actually doesn't, you know, they're not sending it, the system is sending it out, but it happens as a result of the visitor host going in and marking them as having attended or the visitor going, host going in and entering their visitor into the system. All right, so there should only be the one email that goes out after they visited. Now, is it a good idea <laughs> for the person that invited them to call up that visitor and say, hey, by the way, I really appreciate you going to the meeting today. I hope you got some value in it. Is it a good idea for the president to call them up and say, hey, it was great to meet you? Yes, absolutely. That, you know, this is all about those touches and making the person feel like they were welcome and making them feel like they were part of the group. Um, I know, Mark, your next comment is, I don't want to overwhelm the guest either. Yeah, yes, sending them what 42 emails would probably be overwhelming, but two or three phone calls from different people, that visitor is going to be so impressed. Does that help, Mark? All right, Jenny, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Uh, that was the last question, comments. I saw. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts? Uh, about the visitor process or about anything else in BNI Connect. Uh, while I have you on the line, uh, I am happy to answer any questions at all about BNI Connect. Uh, Jenny just had a comment, says the member that was using the MARS system 
should technically be the same person doing the follow-up portion in Connect. And by the way, the other thing, speaking of that, um, is the way that permissions work in BNI Connect is that as you are assigned certain functions, you'll see certain things. So right now, you may only see, you may not see all of these options. You may only see register a prospective visitor, but not the other three things. Once you become a visitor host, and you're officially a visitor host in the system, and Jenny and Adam have turned this on from moving over from the Mars system, then you'll start to see those other options. All right. Cool. All right, I don't see any other questions, so... And one final comment, and Jenny says, Adam is going to be uh, turning all of this on over the weekend. So everything should be ready for Monday. Awesome news. Thank you, Jenny. All right. And on that note, I think I'm going to sign off for the weekend. I am on the East Coast, so I am a couple of hours closer to my weekend. Um, and it's time to get started on that. So. Thank you guys so, so much for uh, for being here with me today. Really, um, I, I absolutely appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out of your busy days to invest in your chapter and learn more about this process. I honestly, I really, truly believe that this will increase the number of visitors that actually show up after they said they'd come to a meeting as long as you start following the system. So on that note, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Remember, a good referral for me is to please help me to promote these webinars to the other members in your region, and happy connecting.